All right, friends, what's happening? Welcome back to another exciting day at Babylon Talmud. Today, our excitement is focused on the 31st page of Brachos, Taflamud Aleph. Um, we do have some cool stuff for you here over here for all of us. Um, you, this may already start becoming sort of, um, I, I don't know the word, it's not remnant, or is it? It might. Re, uh, reminiscent of, of like sort of the first parak, the beginning of the Masechta. We had these big pages with lots of psukim and kind of stories and sort of more abstract things that we learn out from uh, psukim and Tanakh, Agadita. The first part of, of today, we're going to be talking about, you know, just some basic kind of hilchos uh, of tefillah. Uh, and then we're going to get into the story of Chana when she prayed and the story with Eli when he suspected her of being drunk. That whole story, which is... Um, Pretty cool. So that's what's on the agenda for today. Um, I hope everybody enjoys, and we're going to get started. We're about 15 lines into the page on Daf Lamed Aleph Umr Aleph at the two dots where it says Tanur Abanan in Omdin the Ispalel Lo Mitochtin. The rabbis taught we do not stand up to pray, not from din, not from like judgment, Lo Mitochtvar Halacha, not from any kind of complex halacha. Elamitoch halacha psuka, only from like a sort of straightforward halacha, something very very simple that uh, I guess is very cute, a nice little vort, and then you could uh, go to daven after that. Veichidami halacha psuka, and what is an example of a very simple straightforward halacha? Amr Abaye kihadur abzera. So Abaye said an example of this is like the statement of abzera at the end of Masech Danida. Amr abzera. Okay, this was an interesting choice for Abaye for his um, very straightforward and simple halacha. He basically chose a halacha that Rabbi Zera said at the end of Masechta Nida that basically throws the entire Masechta on its head. <laughs> I mean, I could think of simpler uh, halachas, but in any event, um, basically Rabbi Zera says... I mean, Masech Nida is considered one of the three hardest Masechtas, right? Go figure, right? You have Nida, Yavamis, and Ervin, which we will, Ervin, we will have the um, great joy of learning uh, in about six months from now, seven months. Um, those are the three hard ones. Now, after basically going through the entire Masech Nida and like doing all sorts of complicated calculations about trying to figure out, you know, you may Nida, you may Ziva, Shemar Yom, Kineged Yom, all sorts of complicated stuff. Reb Zer basically says, all right, at the end of this, um, we're just going to avoid all the complications and just say, look, if ever a woman sees um, period blood, she or any blood, really, she will um, wait seven clean days. And that is that you avoid basically all of the complicated stuff from Masech Danida. Um, so even though I guess uh, on the one hand, this isn't a such a, you know, I guess Nida is, is complicated, but I guess the whole the point behind this halacha is to basically remove all the complications, which is like, you know, to say, okay, let, so let's forget about all these complicated calculations. Let's just say that if ever a woman sees Dom, then she just waits seven clean days, and that's the end of that. So I guess, you know, it, it is a halacha that definitely um, is there to simplify things. That that That's for sure, to get rid of complicated calculations. Okay, fine. So Rava Amar. Okay, so Rava says that an example of a simple halacha is that of Rav Hoshaya, that he says that a person can, I guess Mayrim is, probably comes from the word like to be tricky, I guess. Mayrim Adam al also he can be tricky, I guess, with his grain, he can bring it inside with... Um, the, while it still has the chaff, so that his animal can eat it, ufturim and a miser, and it'll be potter from truma and miser. So basically, the way that things work is that when you grow grain, so as we talked about on the first day, uh, the first daf, so when you grow grain, you can't eat it right away. It's tevel. You first have to separate all sorts of tithes. However, the thing is that it only becomes tevel. You, it only becomes, you only the obligation to separate all these ties only kicks in once, you know, all sorts of steps have been done to it. The final step being what's called meruach, which is when you put it in a 
pile and you flatten off the top of the pile. At that point, when you then bring it into your house to store it or your storage house, whatever it might be, at that point, it's chayav in Miser. Okay. Now, if you bring it into your house before you kind of go through all the steps, right? Um, so in this case, we're saying you can bring it into your house with its chaff still on it, right? And that hasn't been winnowed and all that kind of stuff. So then it would be patermido orisa from truma and miser. So theoretically, if you do this, you can, you know, uh, find that's basically a loophole in trumas and miser, miseros, and you don't have to take any of that stuff away. However, the chacham said that, you know, no, if you're going to be eating kavua, if you can eat like an actual meal and be eating from this food, so then, so then you do still have to take truma and miser. However, for your animals, you don't, um, you, you can continue to feed them. If you take, you know, this grain and you don't go through all of the steps of processing it and you bring it into the house while it still has its chaff on, you can feed it to your animals and it's no problem. Okay. Interesting that this is, again, that this is considered like a simple halacha. I don't know. I could think of simpler ones. This, is, this does have complexity. Daraisa, Darabana, and animals, people, Sudas Keva, Sudas Sarai. I don't know. Okay, fine. But this kind of halacha, you know, if you, go, if you want to pause your video right now or podcast and go daven, you, you, you would be allowed to. Okay, welcome back. Hope whatever you prayed for is answered. Vibai Seima, or if you want, I will say, Kiadu Rav Huna, to Amr Rav Huna, Amr Rav Zeira. Rather, it might be like Rav Huna that he says in the name of Rav Zeira, Hamekes Dam Vivhemas Kodshim, Asur Bano, Umoal Inbo. That if you bloodlet, I don't understand why these are considered simple halachos. These are, these are like, the first one had to do with like, you know, a whole introduction about Nida. The second one had to do a whole introduction about Truma and Meiser and Meiruach and Rohe Pnei Abayas. This has to do with Meila and Kachim and Dam and what, I don't understand why this is halacha psuka. Maybe somebody could tell me. This doesn't seem like halacha psuka to me. But anyways, um, fine. Uh, basically, if you, if you take an animal that is, um, that you have set aside to be a korban, right? You go to an animal, you say, I am going to offer this animal as a sacrifice in the temple. And then you bloodlet that blood. The question is, um, does that blood have a din me'ila? Me'ila means that you're not allowed to get uh, any benefit from an animal that has been set aside for to be a sacrifice, right? So if you have, let's say, a cow, you can't milk it anymore or anything like that. Um, so basically the question is what if you bloodlet the animal, can you get hana from that blood? And the answer is no, you cannot, right? It's um it's asurbana, and if you do get hana by accident, then you'll bring a carbon me'ila. I don't remember what happens if you uh, uh, do me'ila on purpose. I even learned the entire Masek Gemara Me'ila, and I, I was wondering that the entire time, and I still don't have an answer. I think it might be one of those like bad stuff that's like karies or something like that. But I don't know. Maybe somebody could tell me. Um Zo, so there you go, friends. Um, if you learn any of these halachas, if you learn halacha psuka, you can then go daven after halacha psuka. Okay, zo. Now this, of course, is a little bit different than our mishnah that we learned yesterday, which is in omd in nispal elam toch kovid rosh, right? So over there we said that you pray out of humility. Over here we're saying that you pray out of like yeah, learning a little bit of halacha. Okay. So the gemara says rabbanon avde kimas nisin ravashi avid kibraisa. So the rabbanon would do like um, the mishnah. That they would, you know, pray out of humility. Maybe it means that they would do some kind of meditation first to to, to get themselves um, focused. Um, Rav Ashi would do like the Brisa, and he would he would learn a little bit before the Avni. Okay, fine. Tana Rabbanan, the Rabbis taught in Omdin this pal lomitoch atzlos. Don't daven if you're sad. Lomitoch atzlos, right? Or don't be sad before you daven. I mean, I don't think it's saying that if you're sad you shouldn't daven. Probably is trying to say like cheer yourself up first and then daven. But Mistami, you should daven even if you're sad. I assume. I assume that would be the halacha, but maybe not. V'lo mitoch atzlis, don't daven out of laziness, okay? V'lo mitoch schok, not because of, you know, playing around too much. V'lo mitoch sicha, and not from just like, you know, talking about nonsense. V'lo mitoch kalas rosh, and not from lightheadedness. V'lo mitoch tvarim betelim, and not from just like, I don't know, no kind of things. El mitoch simcha shal mitzvah, rather you should pray from the, the, the happiness of a mitzvah, okay, fine. And Rashi explains Simcha uh, Shal Mitzvah, you know, like, for example, you know, you know, we talk about Gulas Mitzrayim, or like at, at, at um, Mincha, we'll say Ashrei beforehand, you know, things that'll kind of get you in the mood. So I guess that the main show at Davening is really Shmona Esrei, but we have all this stuff, you know, leading up to Shmona Esrei to kind of get us in the mood. Um, cool. 
Also, if a person is leaving his friend, right? You're just hanging out, you're drinking beers, and now you're, you know, you're going home. So when you leave, so it should be lo mitoch sicha. Shouldn't be out of um, just speaking nonsense. Lo mitoch schok, not from messing around. Lo mitoch kalas rosh, not from lightheadedness. Lo mitoch tvarim betelim, and not from null kind of things. Ela mitoch tvar alache. Oh, very good. So although the agos agra, I believe changed that to simcha shal mitzvah. Okay, which I guess is similar to um, what we just said about davening. And let's see. Because we find by the earlier prophets that they would complete their words with um, things of praise and consolation. All right. So I guess basically next time you leave your friend, uh, tell him like a vort or something like that um, or something sweet, something nice. Okay. Oh, a person shouldn't leave his friend with a dvar alacha. Okay, very good. Oh, very nice. That that way he will remember him. Very nice. Rav Kahana was uh, escorting Rav Shimi Barashi Pum Naira Ad Beit Nisa. Okay. The Bavel. That was in Bavel. I guess there was a place called Pumnaira and a place called Tznisa, Beit Tznisa, and um, Rav Kahana escorted Rav Shimon Barashi that entire distance. Kimat al-Hasam, when they got there, Amrle, Mar, Vadai, the Amre, Inche, Hane, Tznisa, the Bavel, Isnu, Mi, Adam, Arisham, Vad, Hashta. And I guess, I don't know, maybe Rav Kahana said to Rav Shimon Barashi, is it true what they say that these palm trees in Bavel, they were, they've been here, Mamish, since the days of uh, Adam? So Amalei ad karten milsa the Rabbi Yosi b'avchinina. So I think Rav Shimon Bar Ashi responded to Avchinina. He says, "Wow, you, you know, you're reminding me of of uh, something that I heard, or some in the name of Rabbi Yosi b'avchinina." The Amar Rabbi Yosi b'avchinina. My dichsev. What does the pasuk mean? Be'eretz asher lo aver ba'ish v'lo yashav adam sham. And um, there's a pasuk in Yirmi. It says it says that um, what was it that right, that God I think took us through the desert, a place where no uh, person had ever passed through before and there had never been a settlement there. So the question is, if nobody had ever passed through this place, well then how could it have possibly ever been settled? It wouldn't have been enough to just say at a place where nobody ever passed through. And then the Mela, obviously, no, it was never settled if nobody ever passed through. So the Loma Lecha, rather to tell you, any um, place that Adam Arishon said that, you know, there will be some kind of inhabitants in this place. So some kind of inhabitants happen in that place. And any place where Adam Arishon did not say that this will, place will be inhabited, they won't be inhabited. And therefore, since Adam Arishon said that this place will have palm trees, therefore it had palm trees. Okay. Rav Matre Ilvaye Rav Shimi Bar Ashi Meagronia Bad Bekife the Amrila Ad Beidora. So now Rav Matre would um, escort Rav Shimon Bar Ashi from Hagronia until Bekife. Some say Itaka was all the way until Beidora. And for all of you who are Babylonian geography buffs, I'm sure you know just how long that was. Tanar Abanan. Hamaspal Tsar Shechavin is Libo Lashamayim. Somebody who's praying, he needs to align his heart with his Father in heaven. No. Uh, to heaven. Abishal Omer says Abishal, similar davar, and we have a sort of sign for this in a pasuk in Tehillim. It says, Tochin libam takshivaz necha, that when they um, sort of prepare their hearts, well then God will listen. Tanya, we have a brisa. Am Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda said, Kachayim nago Rabbi Akiva. This is how, this is what Rabbi Akiva would do. Kishayim espalal imat tzibor. I think what this means that if he was the shaliach tzibor, if he was the chazan, I think. If anybody has different thoughts, please, please let us know. The reason why I think he was the Chazan is because it says Ve'ola, that he would go up. Now, you know, my thinking being that the Chazan would be lower down than everybody else because Mima Amakim Krasi Hashem. So he basically is saying that he would daven quickly when he was the Shleach Tibor and then he would go back up, you know, when he was done being the Shleach Tibor. So he didn't want to take a long time. You know, he wanted to keep things pretty tame when he was the Chazan. Uh, when he was a shaliach tzibor, because um, you know he, he didn't want to take too long and 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 um, be mitaret burden anybody, so so he would be quick 
when he was a shaliach tzibur, shayim is bala beno levin atmo. But if he was just davening by himself, I don't know if it means like bichidos by himself, or maybe just even like when he was at the minion, but he didn't wasn't responsible for leading the show. So in other manicho bezavazo umitzo bezavasacheres, you mamish, you know, he would start davening in one corner and he would finish up davening in a different corner. Mamish, he would be moving. Because of all the bowing downs, I guess he would get kind of taken away. And he would mamish, you know, end up on a different part of the room. Very cool. person should always pray in a house that has windows. As the Pasuk says, It says in the Pasuk in Daniel that he went back to his house. And he went up to his second floor, and over there there were windows that he had that would open up and looked out at Jerusalem, and that's where he would play. Now, did I say play? I meant pray. Now, is it possible that a person can pray all day long? Now, of course, as we've mentioned a few times, Rabbi Yochanan had this thing of Adam Kulo, right? A person should pray all day. But the Gemara says, is it possible that a person um, should pray all day? So Kfar Meforash, Aide Daniel, it says in that same Pasuk in Daniel, Vizimnin Tlasa Vigomer, that three times a day he would um, he would pray. So three times a day, not all day. Yachom Shabalagola Huchala. Is it possible that he only started praying three times a day when he got to the exile? So Kfar Neamar, it already says in that same Pasuk as well, Dihu Avad min Kadmas Dina. Dihava Avad min Kadmas Dina. Right, as, as he would do even before this. I guess even before the exile, he was praying three times a day. Is it possible that you pray in any direction that you want? Also, as we learned, I believe it was yesterday. Neged Yerushalayim, you talk a pray towards Jerusalem. Is it possible that you can pray all of the prayers just at once? Instead of praying, just do it all at once. So, David, it says already in Tehillim, Tichsiv er vavoka v'tzaraim v'gomer. Right, in the evening, in the morning, and in the afternoon. So not all at once. Yachol yashmiya kol b'tfilaso. Is it possible that when a person prays, his words should be audible? You should be able to hear them? Kfar mefor yashayi chana. It says by chana, shene'amar v'kola lo yishamea. That you could not hear her voice. Her voice was inaudible. So, so when you pray, do not um, have your voice be audible. Is it possible, you know, the way that we have Shimon Esther is we first start out with some praise of God, right? Right, uh, you know, uh, with the first three brachos are praise of God. Um, and then afterwards we ask the 13 brachos of asking God for things. Is it possible, however, we could switch it around, first ask God for things, and then sort of praise Him? So, Shlomo, it's already explained by Shlomo Melch Shenemar, uh, as it says in his prayer when he was, um, you know, inaugurating the temple, the Shmoa Shanamar, the Shmoa la Rina vela Tfila, to listen to the rejoicing and to the Tfila, Rina zo Tfila. So Rina is uh, Tfila, which is like, you know, uh, praising God. Tfila zo Bakasha, and Tfila is um, requesting things. So basically, first you praise God and then you request things. Um, fine. Then we say, Ein Omer Davar Acher Emes V'yatsev. So then we say, you know, Emes V'yatsev being the bracha after Kriya Shema in the morning before Shemona Esrei. So between uh, Emes V'yatsev and Shemona Esrei, right, Smichas Gula Tefillah, we don't say anything. We go straight into the Shemona Esrei. Aval, Acher Atfila, but once you say, once you finish your prayer, Amvar Chesam Yisrael Bashalom, so Afilu Kesei the Rida Shema Kippurim Omer. Oh, then you can even say, like the confessions of Yom Kippur, that very long, you know, stuff, we say after the bracha, Mubarak Hassan, we say shalom, right? We say a whole long prayer of all sorts of stuff that we want. Um, so we're saying that, um, and, and that's true on any day of, 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 of the year, right? On any of the three prayers of the day. Um, what, what you do is basically after Mubarak Hassan, we say shalom, then you say Elokai Nitzor, and then after the words, right, um, Lemani Chatsuni Didecha Oshe Yimin Chavaneni, so after you say that, you can then pray for whatever you want, for however long you want. And then when you're done with your own personal prayer, then you say, And then you take your three steps back and you conclude your um, prayers. So in Marnami, we also have a statement of Amorayim. Amor of Chiyabar Ashi, Amorav, Afopisha Amrushu al-Adam, Tzrachav B'Shomei Atfila, 
Even though we say that a person can ask for whatever they want in the blessing of Shomea Tfila in Shemona Esrei, but if a person wants to, um, you know, sort of elaborate and, and do the, you know, have a longer kind of um, set of requests for God, so then after he's done with the Shemona Esrei, where we just described, he can go for however long as he wants, even as long as the confession of Yom Kippur. Amav Abnuna Kamehilchas Gavravta. I think that's how to say that word. Also, the Mishma Mehane Kroe Techano. Oh. So, Rav Amnuna says that we can learn out all sorts of amazing things by the Psukim by uh, Chana. So, first of all, what, what, what is the story of Chana? Basically, who is Chana? Chana was a woman who was married to this guy named Elkana. Now, Elkana had two wives. One of them was Chana, one of them was Penina. Penina had a bunch of children, I think seven. And Chana was unable to have any children. And basically every year they would go to um, Shiloh, to the um, um, uh, Mishkan, and there he would offer a sacrifice. And he would always divide it up to, uh, to Penina, and she would get all sorts of extra things for her children. And Chana would never have any uh, for her children because she didn't have any. And she would be very distraught about it. Until one year she went to pray um, when she was there at Shiloh. And Eli, who was the Kohen Gadol, he saw Chana. He thought that she was drunk and he suspected her of, you know, like just being a random crazy drunk lady at the um, Mishkan. And um, he said, like, basically, hey, knock it off. You know, don't don't come here drunk. And she said, look, I'm not drunk. I'm just extremely distraught, to which he then blessed her to have a child. And and, and we're going to go through the entire story of that right now. But that that is essentially who Chana was and, and the story that we're going to be discussing. So now... So if Hamnuna says that we can learn out all sorts of amazing stuff from the Psukim at the beginning of Sefer Shmuel that describe the story of Chana. So, V'chana hi medaberes al liba. It says that Chana was speaking um, on her heart. Mikan lemispal tzarech shichav in libo. So we learn from there that somebody praying needs to um, um, focus his heart. Raks naos. Only her lips were moving. Mikan lemispal Right, so from here we learn that somebody who's praying, he should actually, you know, say the words with his lips. I guess maybe not just view them with his eyes, or maybe not just mumble them, but he should actually, you know, um, um, what's the word? Um, I can't remember. But he should actually just say every, you know, he should say every single word. Fine. Um, and her voice was inaudible. Mikan she'aser la'agbia kolo. So from here we learn that when you pray, you shouldn't, you know, pray loudly, right? I think the point is you should just say it just loud enough so that you can hear it, but hopefully not loud enough that the person next to you can hear it. And Eli, the Kohen Gadol, saw her praying and he thought that she was drunk. Okay, so we hear, from here we see that somebody who's drunk is not allowed to pray. Okay. Vayomer Elea. Eli, so now Eli said to her, To what extent are you going to, you know, what, 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 what are you doing over here drunk? So, so we learn from here that if somebody sees that his friend is doing something no good, he has to give him musr, he has to tell him, you're doing something no good. Now, 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 uh, don't get carried away over here. Don't don't get carried away over here. Vatan Chana Vatome Vatom Vatomar Vatomer Vatomer. Chana answered and she said, Lo Adoni, no, that that, that that's not the case. Amr Ula bi Itema Rebiosi Bab Khanina. Amrle, she said to Eli, Lo Adon Atabadavarze, you are no master on this on this matter. Lo Racha Koda Shora Alecha, and you have no um um holy spirit upon you, Shata Khoshdeni Bidavarze. That you are suspecting me of being drunk. Ikadamr, to those who say, Hachiyamrle, this is what she said to him. Lo Adon Ata, you are no master. Lab Ika Shkina Vuracha Kodesh Gabach, there is no um, uh, divine presence and Holy Spirit by you. Shedantani Lechav Chova, Lo Dantani Lechav Suchus, that you judge me uh, to be guilty and not judge me to be innocent. Because of course we have the concept of Dan Lechav Suchus, you should always judge somebody um, um, innocently, right? And she said, you are automatically assuming that I'm guilty. Do you not know that I'm a broken woman 
I haven't drank in, I haven't drunk any wine or other intoxicants. So Rabbi Lazar says that we learn from here that if somebody, you know, if, if somebody's accused of doing something that um, he or she is innocent of, so then they need to let the accuser know that they are incorrect. Says the Gemara, do not just assume that your maidservant is sort of a wanton woman. It's getting worse and worse for us. So that um, Rabbi Lazar says that from here we learn that somebody who's drunk and who prays, it's like um, he's um, worshipping idols. Oy, what are we going to do about this? It says over here, so just like over there when it says Blial, it says it's talking about a Zara. So here also if a person prays when he's drunk, it's like he worships a Vodazara. Okay. Eli. So Eli answered, Vayomer, and he said, shalom. May you go in peace. Amar Rebelazar, Mikan So we learn from here. That if, you know, if somebody accuses his friend of something that is uh, bogus, that's not true, so then when he's proved wrong, he has to then appease that person. Not only does he have to appease that person, he has to bless that person. And may the God of Israel give you what you have prayed for, which is, of course, for a child. Vatidar Vatidor Neder Vat Vatomer Vatomar, who could tell me? Vatomar. Vatidor Neder Vatomar. She made a um, sort of promise and she said, Hashem Tsvakos, right? God of all legions. Amr Belazar said Rabbi Lazar, Mum Shabara Kadush Bakwa Salamalohaya Adam Shikra Ola Kadush Bakhu Tsvakos Achibasa Khanavra Kraso Tsvaus. Right? And from the time that the Abishra created the world, nobody had ever referred to God as Tzvakot until Chana came and referred to Hashem as Tzvakot. Amra Chana Lefnei HaKadosh Baruch Hu And Chana said before God, Rebbeinah Shalaylam, Master of the world, Mikot Tzivei Tzvaos Shebarasa Ba'olamcha From all of the legions upon legions that you created in your world, Kasha Be'inecha Shetiten Li Ben Echad Is it so difficult for you, you know, to give me one child? You've created all all sorts of intricacies, all sorts of things that we don't even know that they even exist, all sorts of crazy stuff. You can't even just give me one child. What is it similar to? What's a parable that it's similar to? To a king of flesh and blood. That he made a feast for his servants. And one poor person came and he stood by the entrance to the feast. And he said to them, no, can you, can you just give me one piece of bread? And they didn't pay any attention to him. So he forced his way in to the banquet, into the party, and he ran right up to the king. And he said, My master, the king, from this entire extravagant banquet that you created, is it so difficult for you to give me one piece of bread? So that was the same um, sort of um, you know, plea that Chana was making from God that she basically went straight up to the Mishkan um, in Shiloh and she prayed out to God. Um, you know, you know, can, can you just spare me one one child? Imra o Esh. She then continues and she says, if it, it, you know, so literally what it, you know, generally it's translated. If you right, if you certainly see you know in my pain and give me a blessing, I will make him. You know, I'll de- donate the child to God. And but. The Gemara learns in Ra'o Tir'eh. If you see, great. And if you don't see, then you will see. I will force you to see. Amr Belazar, Zakr Belazar. Amr Khan al Fnea Kadosh Baruchu. Khana said to God, Ribona Shalal, the master of the world. Imra'a Mutab. Imra'o Mutab. If you see, you know, if you see what I'm praying for and you see my, my brokenness and you give me a child, then amazing. Thank you so much. I, could, I won't be, ha- I, I, I couldn't be happier. Vi'imlav Tir'eh. But if you don't, you know, acknowledge my plea and you don't give me a child, well, then you you will see. I will force you to give me a child. How will I force you to give me a child? I'll go and I will seclude myself 
with another man in front of my husband, Elkanah, and since I will seclude myself with another man, so then my husband will suspect me of uh, of idolatry. No, not idolatry. What's the word? Uh, no, is it called it? No, it's not idolatry. I don't know. I forget the word now. I'm a little bit under the weather. But um, um, it basically, he will suspect me of being with another uh, woman. And what happens is there's a whole thing called sota. They're going to um, 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 make. They're going to give me this drink that is going to check. And if I am guilty, if I did have a relationship with another man, so then I'll die. But if not, well then God, you will be forced to give me a child. So viata right? Mashuli mesota viata ose torascha plaster. And you are not going to make your Torah, of course, into a hoax. Shinemar. It says in the Torah, Gnixa. It says that if the uh, this woman who was suspected of um, uh, uh, being with another man, um, so then so then um, if she is innocent, so then she will be clean and she will have a child. Okay, so uh, this logic that we're saying. Uh, that Hannah basically said, God, if you don't give me a child, I'm going to force you to give me a child by, by doing the whole Sota thing. Well, that makes sense if you say that that's actually what happens by Sota, that you know, if uh, she's innocent, so then if she was unable to have children, she will now be able to have children. Well, great, that, that works, right? She basically threatened God that if you don't give me what I want, I'll force you to give me what I want. But there's a different opinion, which is that no, if she was already have children, having children, but her births were painful, she'll be able to have, um, you know, uh, um, non-painful births. Nikevos yulede zucharim. If she was giving birth to uh, girls, she will give birth to boys. Shchorim yulede levanim. If she was giving birth to dark children, she'll give birth to pale children. Ktsarim yulede aruchim. If she was giving birth to short children, she will give birth to long children. Well, then what do you say according to that opinion, right? Because according to that opinion. So then it's not like, you know, if you don't have children, you'll just automatically start getting children. No, it's if you already have children, they'll be tweaked a little bit to whatever your preferences might be. The Tanya, as we learn in Abraisa, Vinixa Vinizra Zara, right? That it says in the Pasuk that if she's innocent, she will have children. So Bishmael says that if she was barren, she will all of a sudden now be able to have children. Amalar Bekiva. So Bekiva said to Rabbi Shmuel, Nu Rabbi Shmuel, there's a bug over there. Imkain yelchu kol ha'ikaros ha'akaros kulan v'istatru. Then all of the barren women will just realize that there's a solution, um, you know, and they'll be able to have children. What do they do? They just need to hide themselves in a room with another guy, get, um, you know, uh, um, suspected by their husbands, go drink whatever, drink this drink, and then they'll have children. And as long as she, you know, didn't actually have a relationship with this other man, she will now have children. So Ella, Melamed, no. So says Rabbi Kiva, that is not the way it goes, right? Rather, it teaches you, Shemai, so you'll let this betzai, you'll let this brevach. If she uh, would, until now, have painful births, she will have um, less painful births. Ketzarim, let this aruchim. Short children, she'll have long children. Shcharim, let this levanim. Dark children, she'll have uh, pale children. Echad, you'll let this shnaim. She would give birth uh, to one child at a time. Now she will... Have the uh, she will uh, give birth to two children at a time. So my imra otire. So according to that opinion, so then what's her threat, right? We are saying imra otire. Either if you see, great. If not, you will see because I will force you to give me a child. But according to Bikiva, she won't necessarily get a child even if she becomes a sota. So dibratara kalashim bani adam. So why does it say imra otire? It's just like a regular saying. So it's just a way of saying um, you shall surely see, right? It's not necessarily a threat. Okay. So it says, Ba'oni amasecha, velo sishka ches amasecha, venasata la amascha. So Am Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Chanina, Gimel amasos halalu lama. Right? How come Chana said the word am, right, ama, right, amasecha, right, those things three times? So Rashi explains that amascha is kilulashon misa, right? Amascha, misa. Right? So Amra, Chana, lifnei kadosh baruchu, Chana said before God, Ribono shalalam, master of the world, shlosha bidke misa barasa beisha. There are three um, sort of checks of death 
that you created for a woman. Those who say it's no three things that cling to a woman uh, regarding death. And Rashi says that what that means is that you know in a in a sort of um, uh, insecure time, sort of a dangerous time where things are kind of up in the air. If if um, she has, I guess if she hasn't been careful with these three things, so then uh, things may not go in her favor. And these are them. Nida uh, v'chalav ad lakasaner. Um, if if a woman wasn't um, um, careful with the halachos of nida, with the halachos of separating chala, and the halachos of lighting candles on on erev Shabbos, um, so those are those three things. And she says, I haven't I haven't violated any of them. I've been very stringent regarding all three of them. Okay, fine. And you will give to your maidservant Zera Anashim. My Zera Anashim. What's a Zera Anashim? Amarav, Gavra Beguvrin. Oh, so Rav says a very manly man. Okay. Ushmuel Amar, Zera Shemoshech Shnei Anashim. Shmuel says a child that will anoint two other men. Uman Inun, who are these two other men? Shaul the David. That Shmuel anointed Shaul Amelech as well as David Amelech. Rabbi Yochanan Amar, Zakta Rabbi Yochanan. Zera Sheshakul Kishnei Anashim. A child that is equal to two other men. Uman Inun, who are these other two men? Moshe v'aharon. Shneamar Moshe v'aharon b'chohanav u'shmua b'koreei shemo. That Moshe and Aharon in their great service as Kohanim, and Shmuel when he calls out in God's name. Um, so we see that Moshe and Aaron are on Kilu, one side of the scale, so to speak, while Shmuel is on the other side, equal to both of them. Rabbanan Amri, Zara, Zara Anashim, is Zara Shemuvla ben Anashim. The Rabbanan say Zara Anashim means a, an ordinary child, doesn't stick out too much, not extraordinary in any way. Kyasa of Dimi Amar, when of Dimi came from Eretz Yisrael to Babel, he explained what this means. The aruch below goats, not too tall, not too short. Below katan, below alam, not too thin, not too thick. Below tzachar, below gichor, not too white, not too red. Below chacham, below tipesh, not too smart, not too stupid. Okay, very, very nice. Ani aisha ani tzevisim chabaze. I am the woman who is standing with you. So Rashi explains what it means with you. It means that it, the implication being that Eli was also um, standing. Okay, assuming that this was still during the time of the prayers, but from the context of the so Kim, it actually seems that this is talking about something else, where like after Shmuel was born and she waited and she then when he was ready, she brought him to say that, you know, his, he's your, yours to be of service for you for the rest of his life. So she went to remind Eli, look, I'm that woman who, who was praying for the um, child a few years ago. But anyways, the Gemara makes a drasha that I'm the woman who's standing with you. From here, we learn that it's forbidden to sit within four um, amos of, of prayers. And this is Taka Alacha. Kilu, we, um, um, if somebody's davening Shmon uh, you shouldn't sit down within four amos of that person. This is a very interesting uh, sort of anecdote, which uh, you're only going to find here on Daf Lamed Bez, Lamed Aleph Lamed Bez, and Masech the Brachos. So Elanar Azez Palati. Chana says to Eli, I prayed for this child, for this young lad. Amr Belazar, Shmuel Mora Allah Lifne Rabuhaya. Rab Belazar says that Shmuel uh, was 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 guilty of 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 giving a halachic ruling in front of his teacher. Shinemar, as the Pasuk says, by Shritu Sapar, by by Viu Sanar El Eli, that they slaughtered the uh, cow and then they brought the lad to Eli. Now again, in the in the con- in the simple context of reading of the Psukim, it's talking about when um, Chana came with Elkanah to Shiloh to bring Shmuel there to, you know, sort of donate him to service in the Mishkan. So they came, they shechted a can- animal, and then they brought the animal. Then they brought Shmuel to Eli and says, "Look, this is, you know, our child. Please accept him as, uh, you know, to work in the Mishkan." But anyways, they make a drasha that the pasuk says that they shechted the cow and then they brought the lad to um, Eli. What just because what, what's the connection between shechting a between slaughtering a cow and bringing Shmuel to Eli? So Ella, Amarloyen Eli, Kiru Kohen Leisi Vilishchot. So Eli said to the uh, Kohanim, he said, "Go call over a Kohen so that we could um, slaughter this animal." 
Chazan and Shmuel, the Mahaj Basa Kohen, the Mishchat, so Shmuel then saw that all the uh, Kohanim were trying to find a Kohen, I guess, I don't know, maybe none of them wanted to do it, or either way, or they're trying to figure out amongst themselves, let's say, you know, who should do the uh, slaughtering. Amrili said to them, how come you're specifically looking for a Kohen, a priest, to um, slaughter this animal? Um, even a non-Kohen is allowed to slaughter the animal. Um, I sue, right, meaning, okay, when you, when you slaughter an animal, there are um, four parts uh, regarding the blood, right? Basically, they slit the thing's throat, that's step number one. Then they uh, catch all of the blood that squirts out. They uh, catch that in some kind of a receptacle. That's number two, Kabbalah Saddam, receiving the blood. Then they walk the blood over to the Mizbech, which is called Holacha Saddam. And then they throw the, mizbe- the blood on the Mizbech, and that's called Zrika Saddam. So only the last three stages need to be done by a Kohen. The first one, slitting the throat, can be done by a non-Kohen, okay? So Shmuel was pointing this out to them. Why are you specifically looking for a Kohen? Anybody can do the slitting of the throat. So I saw the Kame de Eli, and they brought Shmuel, so that, that's, that's what's going on. So they were trying to slaughter the animal, and because of him speaking up when they were trying to slaughter the animal, they brought him in front of the Eli. So Amr Minalacha, so Eli said to Shmuel, where, from where do you know this, right? From where do you know this halacha that anybody could um, slit the throat of the animal? So Amr Lei, Miksiv Shachat HaKohen, I mean, Shmuel says, why not? I mean, does it say anywhere in the Torah that, um, the, the, that the Kohen needs to slaughter the animal? Vikrivu HaKohanim Miksiv says that the Kohanim need to um, offer the animal. And we learn, wh- wh- what does it say? That Rashi said, we learn in the Masech the Chagiga that Vikrivu is um, a reference to receiving the blood. So from receiving the blood and on, the Kohanim have to do it. But um, slitting the throat, uh, anybody can do that. Right? That only from receiving the blood and onwards is what needs to be done by the Kohen. So we learn from here that um, anybody could slit the throat of uh, an animal that is being sacrificed in the temple. So Eli says, Yitaka teaching good. Yitaka saying very good, Shmuel. That's a very nice thing and, and you're right. But there's a problem. Miu However, Mora Alacha Bifne Rabach at at Bukhol Amora Alacha Bifne Rabo Chaib Misa. The only problem is that you unfortunately just gave a halachic ruling in front of your teacher, and um, anybody who gives a halachic ruling in front of his teacher must be killed. So, uh, sorry, dude. Now, Asya Chana, oh, so of course, Chana came and uh, she stepped in and prevented this. And she cried out in front of uh, Eli. Um, I am the woman who was here a few years ago that was crying out and praying for a child. And you bless me, I should have a child. This is that child. He said, hey, hold your horses. Chill out. He says, look, just take it easy. Let me just kill this little guy and I'll pray and you'll get a better little guy. So, all good. She says, no, that's not going to work. I prayed for this child. This child is going to stay alive. And, uh, I don't know, it would, it, yeah, it would certainly appear, um, you know, being that Shmuel went on to be a great man, um, that uh, she won that argument. Okay? So then how do we understand the whole if you rule a teaching in front of your Rebbe, then you're Chayv Misa. If I get, if he's Chayv Misa, then he should be Chayv Misa, right? I don't know. I don't know what to make of that thing. So Chana was speaking on her heart. So Amr Rebbe Elazar, Mishum Rebbe Yossi ben Zimra, Al Iske Libra. She was talking um, regarding matters of her heart. Amra Lefanov, she said before God, Ribona Shalala, master of the world, Komasha Barasa Baisha, La Barasa Dover, Echad Levatala. You know, all of the uh, limbs that you created for a woman or the body parts of a woman, you didn't create even one thing for no. Enaim the Os, you created eyes in order to see. Roznaim the Shmoa, and you created ears so that a woman can hear. Chotem Leariach, a nose to smell. Pelidaber, 
a mouth to speak. Yadayim lasos boyim melacha, you created hands to do work with. Raglaim lahalich boyim, and legs to walk with. Dadim lanik bohen, and breasts in order to nurse babies with. Dadim alalu shinasata alibi, lama, well why did you give me breasts? Lo lahanik bohen, is it not said I can nurse a baby? Tainli ben ve'anik bohen, so give me a child and I will be able to nurse that child and you wouldn't have created breasts for no reason upon me. V'am Rebbe Lazar, and said Rebbe Lazar, Mishum Rebbe Yossi ben Zimra, Kala Yoshev b'tainis b'shavis korin lo g'zardino shoshivim shana. Anybody who fasts on Shabbat, so we tear up, even if there was a negative judgment against him 70 years ago, we tear it up if he even ju- does just one, you know, he fasts for one Shabbat. Um, but even so, we still um, get payback from him for the fact that he did not enjoy himself on Shabbos. My takante, what? How does he fix it? He basically fasts on Sunday to make up for the fast that he fa- the fact that he fasted on Shabbos. Now, I think that in general we we don't fast on Shabbos. Um, you know, and if there's a public fast day, we'll push it off till Sunday. The only exception being Yom Kippur. Um, you know, Chana was disrespectful to God. She never, as the Pasuk says, al Hashem, that she prayed on God. It doesn't say that she prayed to God, it just says that she prayed on God. Right? Which means that she was sort of disrespectful towards God. She threw words towards God. And Rabbi Lazar says that Eliyahu Anavi was sort of, you know, threw words towards God. That he said that you, God, have caused the nation of Israel that their hearts should turn backwards, right? This is, I think, the third time that this is already coming up in, in Masech de Brachos. The story with Eliyahu and the Nevi'e of Baal, the, the, the prophets of Baal and the showdown that they had on Hara Carmel. And he says there that you, God, have caused the, the hearts of the nation to go backwards. How do we know that God actually admitted that Eliyahu was right, and that which I have done bad. Says Rashi, in the top line of Rashi, I caused the Yidin to, to, to get attracted to Vodazar because I created a Yitzhar. Shkoyach, everybody. I hope that you enjoyed today. A uh, very cool story of Chana and other fun little things. So, um, I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. And as usual, peace.